Ladies and gentlemen, Kill Streak in the building! Yeah, hell yeah. What is up? What the f is up, gentlemen? What's I appreciate, going on? I appreciate you guys joining, man. Thank you so much. Uh, if you could, could you please properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now, and plug or promote anything you'd like. Okay, so literally right now, we're in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, but if you, for most people who don't live in Ohio, that's like a Cleveland-ish suburb, Akron, what have you. Uh, I play guitar. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, Get up to, to the mic. Uh, my name is Jeff. <laughs> I'm, I'm Sam. I, I do the screaming stuff, and it's a lot of fun. Hell yeah. And I'm a tattoo artist. And I'm Robert. I hit things for fun. <laughs> and I'm Kyle. I play the bass. Slappity yeah. beast, man. Slap the bass. Hell yeah. Guys, were you were you in projects before Killstreak? And if so, were you, were, were you all in a sim like group together or just were friends from other bands and kind of just made a super group? No. Yeah, no, no. We're, we're, we were all, honestly, we're all from different groups. Uh, when I started with this idea, I wanted to get people together that were like like minded and experienced and professional and all that. So I in a sense, I didn't really do this on purpose, but in a way, I like picked the all stars from some of the best local groups, and uh, it, it's it's worked out so far. Did so, that yeah, require we them quitting, or no. okay? So there, you guys are still in other projects as well. Yes, uh, they. This is my this is kind of my baby, so I'm in this full time. Uh, and Sam too, I, you're you're pretty. You've got he's got a solo project, but uh, yeah, the other guys, Robert and Kyle, are in a couple of different things. Um, so yeah, you guys can talk about that too if you want. Are you in the jungle right now? <laughs> I'm in a marijuana Small jungle. Weed. Feel free to join me if you'd like to come party. <laughs> I do have, I do have, listen, listen, I am, I am business first always. So I'm going to plug my dad's business. My dad owns a CBD store called Hemp Joy. Hell got, yeah. got these awesome, uh, it's perfectly legal. Uh, Delta 10 mints. I got, uh, Indica, gummies i've got sativa gummies for the daytime so uh and these guys love to partake too so yeah we uh we're all excellent. about it excellent i like it i like it so excellent. so to rewind a second you're like fellas i got this i got this idea for a new group it's gonna be about video games we can only make songs about video games and everyone just said i'm in i want i want a part of that that's kind of how it went that was me i brought up the video game yeah thing. so okay. kill streak was already the na a name that i had available um that i kind of converted i used to be a dj so i converted that page to a band page and called a kill streak and and uh i had that like in the way back in my head but i i, I didn't say it and i had sam over for like, the first meeting when there's just him and me and uh he's like dude what if we did this i was like yes like that's duh like that's what i want and he's like it was like same page from the get and like everybody in the band we all love video games and a uh, totally different kinds too so it's really cool to have that because I like Ice Nine Kills a lot. They're really, really dope. And I'm a huge horror fan. And hello. And um, <laughs> well, let me ask okay. you this then. Well, that's, if, since you're a big horror fan. What's your favorite yeah, scary that? movie? Uh, oh, he's got oh Halloween. Halloween, okay. the original? Bussin', yeah. Cool. <laughs> I can dig it. I also, unpopular opinion, I really like the Rob Zombie one too. I do, I do too. I do too. Uh, Fun I, fact, uh, there was that, you know, the kid that plays young Michael Myers? He's a rapper now, isn't he? Fucking, I made beats for him. I what? Uh, beats for him. Yeah. What? He's, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Tom. Yeah. We didn't know. Oh, that. I guess they didn't know that. Uh, my music mentor, I'll <laughs> shout him out. Tom Hazert. He owned a bunch of different labels. He's the guy that discovered corn and Limp Bizkit, blah, blah, blah. But he, uh, he knew that I produced a bunch of different music. And uh, this was years ago. This is before I was ever in, in these kind of bands. And uh, he hit me up and said, like, hey, man, I got a, a, guy, a famous guy who wants uh, some some beats. And I was like, who? Like, I had no idea. He's like, yo, this guy's like, oh, I know this fucking guy. He's from Halloween. <laughs> he's from uh, what was the other the Will Smith movie that he's into? Ha uh, Hancock. Hancock. Yeah. Yeah. Hancock. OK. Yeah. So that, that was that was like, whoa, I just made a beat for for an actor. <laughs> That's awesome. Hell yeah. Where can someone uh, discover your beats? Like, do you have them uh, on? Oh, my God. On, on I don't somewhere? have anything on anymore. Uh, when I was a producer, like I did like dubstep and like house and some trap and shit. And I went by Akuma. There's still stuff on 
uh, Spotify under Akuma, but I, oh, wow. I that is way in the back burner. I did that from like 2012 to 2018, and that's like I'm so focused on the band stuff now that I kind of just uh, more or less just abandoned it. Not that it's bad stuff, it's just I, I, you know, that's one of those things where you, you won't start something new, so you're like no distractions. Chat saying his name is Dag Farch. Yes, yes, okay. thank you. Hell thank yeah. you, chat. Um, nice before we dive into no scope, I, I want to know what's, what's the next two or three video games you guys been tossing around as far as <laughs> songs. Like sh sh should, <laughs> we, you know what, you know what? I fucked up because I said on Twitter, I, I said, if we get to a hundred thousand Spotify plays, I will reveal the next game. And I never did. And it's been like a couple days since that happened. So, you know what, here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to reveal it here. I'll review it on social media too. Oh, drum roll, Robert. Ready? Yeah. Drum roll, Robert. You're the I drummer. You. I got you. Give me a roll. Ah. Boys, I have 180 buttons at all times at my fingertips, just so you know. That is safe. Uh, the next game uh, is Halo. I mean, Ooh. it just had to, it had to be yeah. Halo. Man. Hell yeah, awesome. <laughs> Song about the Master Chief. Let's go. Let's dive yes. into let's dive into No Scope. We play it all the time. It's superb. It's uh, as I mean, as you guys said, just you're, you're kind of like a super group. You went into it. Who yeah. recorded the track? Because the production is phenomenal. Yeah, Danny Coleman of Silver Creek Studios. He it's formerly Central Eight. They renamed themselves, but he's done like Affiance, uh, which is the drummer from Ice Nine Kills. Actually, that's his band. He's done uh, Red Sun Rising. He's done a bunch of uh, his his own projects called uh, Oh God, help me, guys. What is his What is his project again? Thank you, Wide Eyes. He has a very successful gent kind of project that he Gen does uh and yeah. he did my old band audience of rain so i already knew that he was like really fucking good and he's really into like modern metal and so it just worked out because putting his touches on on what we write it's we we are, we are blessed to have him in our corner that's for sure Hell yeah. yes let's jam no scope let's go what's the best call of duty ever made real quick what's the best one call of oh, duty mobile call of duty right? mobile right call of duty mobile What's the best Call of Duty? Oh, you you don't play much uh, of Call of Duty. Zelda is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to I'm going to say honestly, this is not a popular opinion. I do like Modern Warfare 2 like everybody else, but I liked the last World War 2 game the best. Okay, for yeah. sure. Not the newest World War 2 game, not Vanguard, but the one uh, Yeah. World at War 2? Was that it? No, I think it was just called World War II, honestly. Oh, yeah, like you're, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. 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 Yeah. This also looks like Chernobyl. Like, every time I see this video, it reminds me of Chernobyl. Is there, was there a purpose to that, or was it just trying to get us close yeah, to so Nuketown? Like, uh, yeah, uh, the opening scene says Nuketown, so, like, it's, like, obviously a famous map in Call of Duty, which, like, really, like, nuclear fallout kind of 80s, 70s small town that's all boarded up, and uh, I saw this when I was searching for spots, because it's so hard to find good spots. And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. Uh, this is actually a fun fact, the first ever concrete apartment buildings ever built in the United States. Uh, there's nobody, well, I shouldn't say there's nobody in there. There's actually some people living in these, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, we, we went there and like, we didn't scope it out prior. We just went there day of shoot to yeah, scope. Uh, and uh, oh, man, it worked I, out. So we're, you, yeah. you set me up for jokes, but I think when uh, Sam, Sam said it before I did. But... You didn't scope it out. You didn't know no scope. No. No scope. Anyway, were all the were all the tires in that in that room already? Yeah, yeah, they were. It was just a room, literally a. Room. I really it wish like I could have told you that we all just lifted it. a full it. basement full of just tires. Yeah, like you go down there, it's just. You didn't know what you were getting in walking into every room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything was left as is. We didn't really move much except. To put I figured you didn't bring all the tires, but you all never, very you never aged, know. old, abandoned. So very, yeah. <laughs> When we went into each room, we were like, okay, is this the room where the, we're going to see the dead body? Because it was like, there was the rooms were very sketched out in the best way possible. Yeah. Fellas, let's rewind to, to high school days pre... I mean, I'm assuming you weren't in a band at 15, 16 years old, but maybe you were. But uh, what are you what are you guys jamming in your, in your spare time that made you want to pick up an instrument? Sam, for you, pick up a microphone. What are you, what are you practicing in the car I'll vocally? All right. Go ahead. So I'm going to make this short, but I'm obsessed with wolves. And Robert and I used to come over to his house back in the day. I was still in the Marine Corps at the time. 2011? Oh, you know, no, that was, yeah, right before I went in the Marines. And I tried to Thank you for like your service. Wolf. Oh, thanks for the support, dude. Um, I tried to sound like a wolf <laughs> growing up, so I've always been able to do it. And then I did it in a mic. I was like, oh, my gosh, I love this. But I've 
always loved the heavier stuff. As I grew older, the heavier it got. So like I started like Guns N' Roses, <laughs> Pantera, All the Remains, Asking Alexandria, um, Suicide Silence. Yeah. <laughs> Suicide Asking Silence. Asking Alexandria. <laughs> White Chapel. I progressively getting heavier with each band you name. I like it. Oh yeah, now dude, I like stuff like extermination, dismemberment, and good good stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> for me, it's pretty much almost the same thing. It's pretty similar. Uh, for me, I mean, yeah, I kind of started off with kind of like getting raised on '80s classic rock, '80s hair metal, and stuff like that, like Warrant and Van Halen and stuff like that, sort of around that genre, you know. And then, uh, yeah, you know, then I started kind of going off, listen to. Lincoln Park, Three Days Grace, and then, you know, I kept getting heavier and heavier because literally for a while, I thought the heaviest band I ever heard was Creed. And uh, <laughs> My first concert, too, man. My, my first concert <laughs> was Creed, yeah. so yeah, in 2009. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and then I discovered Asking Alexandria through uh, a band I was doing vocals for. My guitar player's like, dude, you got to listen to this band because I think this is more your kind of stuff. So I was just like, all right. And it was Stand Up and Scream. Like, stand Up and Scream, wasn't it? Uh, it was it was a prophecy. Yeah, that that's, was yeah first, that's that was the first song, song I heard, yeah. and I was instantly I was like, "This is the exact sound I'm looking for." And ever since then, I I was way into crabcore. Then you know, yeah, crabcore drop D, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, I was you know getting into heavier and heavier, like Suicide Silence, definitely Whitechapel, definitely. Uh, I was going going down the slam road, and then I kind of found the gent road and kind of stuck with that. So the, the, the gent, gent road, the gent road. It sounds like the best the version of the Wizard of Oz. For real, genre, <laughs> follow the gent uh, uh, road. Uh, <laughs> that's a big joke. But uh, progressive metal, and I really enjoy progressive metal. So I kind of stuck with that, and that's been my thing. So Robert, Robert, yeah. Um, oh, mine's fun too. So I always had hip hop in my background because of like. The environment i grew up in so having that yeah, then yeah, i had a friend yeah, show yeah. Me yeah. thrash metal in high school thank you um and i went from metallica and like has been said down the rabbit hole uh started with a slight tinge of black metal way back into thrash and uh my project before this was metalcore uh and another project i'm currently in is actually the project he used to be the drummer for <laughs> yeah. uh uh, yeah. That is uh, something we'll, I'm sure, promote at the end. I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, we'll, but yeah. Um, have uh, you know, deathcore and some rock at the same time. It's fun. Awesome. So a lot of variety. Um, mine is sort of not the progression that people, everybody else has. Uh, in 1996, my mom took me to the record store in our town where, ironically, the, uh, the guys from the Black Keys, I don't know if they are, but uh, they were working there at the time. And wow. uh, I bought a record from one of the guys, and it was Slipknot's Mate, Feed, Kill, and Repeat on vinyl, which is awesome now because there's only a thousand of those that exist. Um, but so this is like that, this is pre their this is pre debut album. This is pre debut album, which by the way, shout I haven't out heard to of that. That album just turned, uh, oh god, what, how many? Twenty five years old? Twenty years old? Yesterday? Ryan, we're learning so much about yeah, I guess you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I bought Mate, Feed, Kill, and Repeat, and I heard that before I ever knew who Corey Taylor was or anything like that. And uh, that was when they had a different vocalist. That was Anders Colfessi. But uh, so that got me in right away. I also away. didn't like, know I that. Was... I didn't know Slipknot yeah. had a different oh, vocalist. I, also. I don't fanboy for bands except for Slipknot. I get a little. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Oops. they were kind of my inspiration behind every, every every other musical choice, heavy or not, in my life. So I was, uh, that was really important. But I also own a music management agency full time and I manage mostly hip hop artists. So I like a lot of hip hop too. Um, but I, heavier the better to an extent i you know you got to have some dynamics and some variety and stuff so when you say I, like not, heavy hip-hop do you mean like horrorcore or, or stuff that involves no no as far as hip-hop it's actually not heavy so the hip-hop i like is like what i call gen z hip-hop so like uh chase atlantic jake hill uh maggie lindeman uh well she's more pop but uh dane uh keiko there's a lot of cool uh like jaris johnson uh those kind of people I, I'm, I'm really into that when it comes to hip-hop but uh yeah i mean I, I I think the bottom line, the thesis for all of us is we all like really heavy, modern sounding shit, and it just makes writing seamless, which is cool. Hell yeah. Uh, obviously, you guys only have the one song out, so I imagine there is no live shows currently going down. Or right. Got to get a got to get a catalog up. Got to get at least five songs or obviously more, but uh, we don't want to play the same set every night. But uh, the goal is to have a big enough catalog to where we're 
confident with rehearsals and with all of the things, all the moving parts that, yeah, then we're, we're going to play live shows. We're not really going to do the usual uh, band thing because we've all been there, done that as far as the selling tickets for local shows kind of thing. We're, we, we, we're connected enough and, and we work hard enough. Really. That's really more, more important to play festivals and possibly do some tours and stuff, but that's down the line right now. We're focused on creating and that's honestly so much fun. Sam, it looks like you got some new ink right here on your arm. Are you willing to show it off? Oh yeah, dude. It's just a, <laughs> it's just a line. <laughs> Did you How really do... just get a line? It's, so I'm blacking out this arm and I'm going to have some colors pop and it's going to be like negative space and then I'm leaving two strips of me so you can still see my oh, freckles. So kind of like time. what Ronnie Radke just did, but okay, cool. but cooler. No yeah, offense, Ronnie. But um, yeah, and it's just going to be a whole thing and I'm going to be completely blasted. Like I'm excited. Excellent. Excellent. I like the sound of That's that. Tough. Fellas, oh, I, I can asked I you. out my tattoo shop? I asked you guys uh, ahead of time if you'd be down to do some trivia, review some bands with me. Um, are you down to do yeah. some trivia? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, regarding regarding the trivia, right as you jumped on, someone had gotten trivia correct, and I, if they get it correct, I have to do either a punishment or a, if it lands on prize, I give them a prize. But it landed on a shoey, so I have to do that in a second. I'll explain what that is in a minute. But regarding yeah. the trivia... Uh, what what do you guys know the most about as a band? I'm talking movie or TVs or TV uh, shows, Netflix shows, uh, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Batman, anything in film or TV. But you know the most about this because I'm going to ask you something really tough. Are we doing like collectively or like individually? Collectively, because all, all four of you guys have a chance to answer. But I'm going to stop. You I like it, but I'm not. That's us twelve heard. Um, if we do so Zelda, you can answer. Yeah, Zelda, if we do Zelda. <laughs> so I'd say either I'd say either Zelda or Star Wars. Okay, I'm gonna go Star Wars because I don't think Zelda is a movie or a TV show. It's not. It's a game. It's a cartoon. Yeah. Is it really? There's a Zelda cartoon. Okay. Let me just search Zelda. Use see if it comes up. me, princess. There are Zelda questions. So give me a second, gentlemen. In the original Nintendo Legend of Zelda, <laughs> Sam, it's all you. What does Princess Zelda do? to prevent the Triforce from getting into Ganon's hands in the beginning of the game. What does she do to keep it out of his hands? Correct. S seals it. That is not correct. Oh, what? <laughs> Doesn't she cast a spell or something? She does something to the Triforce. Why am I not knowing this right now? Know. What? He puts it on. Wow. Her. He's hyped himself as like the Zelda master. I, bro. <laughs> I think we got you. The correct answer I'm looking for is she splits the Triforce into eight oh, pieces. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, I yeah. I that's I don't know. That's what it says. I'll try another one in a second. We'll 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 do a redemption question. All right, we're gonna try this one more time after I see what it lands on. But I'm gonna ask you a question about Ocarina of Time, and I I would say this is oh. an even harder question. Oh. Yeah, okay. Before I do, are you gentlemen willing to tell me about your most painful tattoo that you have? Yes. <laughs> um, so believe it or not, I'm pretty covered, but honestly, right here, this I got your six on my wrist, that really sucked. And up in like near the armpit section really sucked. I, I don't have, like, have those spots. This. I'm saving those spots for my uh my son's signatures and oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. when they're old enough to like you know right one of them is so i'll probably get sure. one of them soon but cool what about is you guys? everybody answering is that okay uh, i only have one tattoo it's right here i don't know if you can see that i can see it uh it's a tribute to my great uncle who is a holocaust survivor um wow and honestly it didn't it did <laughs> and honestly it uh it honestly didn't hurt like i'm i'm not trying to be like mr like chad here but honestly it it, it was like <laughs> okay because it was my first it was my first tattoo, and I'm like, I hate needles and all that, but I was like, oh, this is chill. So a lot of them aren't chill, trust me. A lot of them suck. Yeah, <laughs> they hurt. But uh, what about you guys? You guys? Uh, I mean, for me, uh, for me, it's actually this tattoo that's on the back of my arm. Can you see that on camera? Yeah. There you go. The key. Yeah. So uh, this tattoo uh, is actually a uh, it's a key symbol, and obviously, and it has an an ampersand right here on the top of it. 
and this ampersand is uh, for this one band I used to be in. I played bass for them for uh, a number of years called Keys and Corridors, and uh, it was like an alternative rock band. We, we you know, we're kind of like a uh, Paramore and Flyleaf, that sort of thing. Scene, yeah, scene, yeah, scene <laughs> kids, definitely, yeah. So uh, that was sort of a uh, you know, or a, uh, a remembrance tattoo of them uh, because they were the first tour I ever went on and the first band I actually played with pretty decently well-known bands with so cool yeah i had to get that uh and then robert uh i don't have any tattoos oh so what's uh, going on what on the design for the first one with him so that's gonna change soon so it's coming cool it's coming sweet okay let's try this one more time this is a little <clears> bit of a long question so bear with me sam but here we go bring it bring it Princess Zelda is almost kidnapped again in the Ocarina of Time. However, she is saved by her servant, Impa. Impa places the princess into hiding, disguised as which character? Sheik. That is correct! Give me a hell yeah! Yeet, yeet. <laughs> well done. Let's see what it lands on this time. <laughs> And then we'll uh, we'll jam a band. The band that comes to mind that I want to show you guys is another band that I know that also makes music about video games. And I feel like if you if you guys ever got a chance to tour with these guys, it would just be a, a match made in heaven. Um, so I'm going to play you one of their songs called Doom Slayer, obviously about Doom. They're called Shot Down no South. Um, but yeah, tell me what you think. Anyway, but when when I found your guys' music video, like they came to mind, and I was like, oh, if I ever get a chance sure. to, to hang out with Killstreak, I want. I got a recommendation too for something similar. There's a band called Majin, M A J I N. Hold up, that's the dope. song is called Ar Argent Cell Eternal. Whoever, they are freaking dope. Yeah, it's Argent Cell, but Eternal. It's the Eternal version, and uh, it's about Doom, and it's uh, one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. Honestly, heard. So shout let's, out, Majin. let's jam it. Ma Majin, Argent Cell Eternal. Check it, it out. Is absolutely ruthless. Oh, YouTube didn't like that one. Let me refresh it. <laughs> I gotta do another hot sauce. Damn it. Fellas, pick a number one through 14. Seven. Got it. Oh, yeah, they got in. They got in for sure. So if, if chat oh, yeah. types, a whole bunch of people type yay, that's how we determine if, if people in chat are like really liking the music and if ours gets a bunch of yays, we add them to this list. That's so they can make a poll and we tag them on Instagram and all that stuff. All nice. right. But you guys have probably seen us tag you on it before. Yes. Um, like Majin Boo. Majin. Hell yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Majin. More gin. Majin. Majin. Oh. There we go. Um, Here comes do we have three. Do we have a, a timetable for, for the Master Chief Halo song as far as a release date in the future? Yeah, we... Uh, so no release date yet. We, we finished the demo. Uh, actually... The drums and everything have been finished today so we're gonna send it over to our engineer uh and you know we we i i like to give conservative timetables i don't want to you know disappoint so I, i'm gonna say before summer's end it'll be out cool fair enough and then to follow up that uh possible ep release maybe early yes. next year yes okay uh, cool. that, that is that is the timetable early next year would be would be doable for sure do you do you anticipate maybe doing any any getting any features uh, from from friends from other bands on a track? We've talked about it. Uh, if we do it, we want to we kind of want to go big. Um, and uh, my my old band has experience with doing features, and I know these guys have had the experience as well. Uh, so it's got to obviously it's got to fit the theme of the song. That's important. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's something that's we could definitely. Uh, possibly have on this EP. I don't want to make any promises, but awesome. Yeah, fellas, I have Bing one. Bong. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh. Bing bong. <laughs> Bing bong. I don't know what that means, but I, I know I what. Feel like, really? I know what bong means. So I'll rip that. Uh, what? What? <laughs> what? Uh, this is the, I have one final question for you guys, then I'll I'll let you go. But um, sure. What? This is probably the most important question I've asked. I ask just about everybody this. What is a piece of advice? Uh, somebody in the music industry has given you that you're willing to share that completely changed everything for you or Ooh. a terrible mistake you made early on in your career that you did not want any band that's just starting up to make. I'll go first. Um, don't, don't, uh, don't be in a band just to be in a band. Uh, when I was a DJ for all those years, I 
missed being in a band and I kind of jumped at the first opportunity and cause I just was like, I want to be in a band. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot from it and I enjoyed my time in that particular band. Um, but at the same time I knew that I would, it wasn't like what I really, really wanted to do. And I was just kind of like trying to scratch the itch forcefully. And, uh, I'm glad that now I think I've, I've taken all those lessons learned and applied it to my current experience and yeah i would say just honestly uh do what you love regardless of how hard it is to get to that point if you know if it takes you an extra year or two to find the right people to be in the band you want to be in then so be it there's no expiration on, on success i tell my artists that all the time and then the last thing i'd say is is find people but yourself as well people that are going to invest financially and time and all the things necessary because a lot of bands are so talented, but they don't invest properly and they're never heard because they don't have good promo, good aggregation, good graphics, good uh, videos, good connections, uh, good stage presence and, and all of that. So it it sucks in the moment. You're like, oh, my God, I got to put more money towards this. But you don't get to relish in the the fun of it unless you put in the work. So that's that's what I have to say. I would say two things Phil Anselmo said it best energy 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 you want to bring that intensity that's gonna make people be like wow yeah I like that I relate to that come from a feeling of pain or hatred or something and put that into your music whatever you're going through and another thing that's a big one is try to find your own sound try to be yourself I started off freaking trying to sound like Mitch Lucker from Suicide Silence because I RIP. But um, through the years, I've gathered a whole bunch of different vocal techniques in my in my sack here that I'm saving <laughs> for later. But <laughs> uh, yeah, try to sound like yourself and bring the energy. Well said. Yeah, let's keep the order. All right. Um, well, I, I also have two things as well. Um, the first thing is I kind of like to live by the code of going by uh, what I heard uh, Dave Grohl said. And Dave Grohl said, kind of screw this whole, um, you know, the voice and uh, American Idol and stuff. Get in a garage, get in a band, pick up an instrument or a microphone and suck. You got to so suck for like a, while, a long that. time to get good. <laughs> that makes sense. Hey, the, I, I think what he's trying to say is, man, keep at it. Keep keep at the dreams. Keep at the, the purity. So I kind of like that. Um, and, and another thing personally for me, too, is um, <laughs> a thing that changed uh, everything for me musically was go on your uh, Spotify playlist or whatever playlist. doesn't matter what you use. Go to your favorite playlist. Hit the shuffle button, but do not skip any songs and listen to every single like that. thing listen to every note listen to every single lyric listen to video game music so and yeah. listen to video game music I listen to all the, all the listen to relaxing yes. music i mean lo-fi listen to hand pan music i mean hand pan yeah hand pan, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh anyway but that that's what i have to say so over to you like robert that. all right yep so, i'll be quick um i guess first piece would be more like business advice as much as music advice check multiple options don't just do the first thing that comes up kind of like what ryan said but on a broader level be it a new member be it anyone new that's coming into what you're doing vet your options don't settle you can't in music anymore mm -hmm. it's not worth settling spend your time well and basically just second what these guys said do what you want to and do it well you can't have half ass anything in this industry anymore get people to fix it for you but you still got to be good yep all but. really really good advice fellas we we look forward to the to the master chief uh superb song that's coming out later on and of course the, the oh, yeah. ep early early next year but you guys are awesome man i appreciate you coming to hang out with me for a little while uh we wish you nothing but success and you're welcome back anytime um ladies and gentlemen kill streak Give me a hell yeah. appreciate you having us on man thank Thanks you guys so for real wait Yes. No, you're good. You're I good. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Are we gonna show the Brie part? <laughs> I think he exited out of the video. I got you. I'm quick can't, with it. Can't blue balls. Is that your most proud, most proud scream in the song? 
Maybe? Question mark. Uh, there, the I don't know. I like them all. I like them all. <laughs> Spoken like that's a true tough. vocalist. That's tough. I put that sure. in for Robert though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's missing something. The final the final mix master comes back. Robert's like, you know what, guys? There's something. There's something still missing. It's one of those breeze right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, fellas. I appreciate it, man. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Absolutely. Um, you wait, too. Before you leave, don't leave me yet. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everybody, including yourself, and can, for everybody that's supporting us right now. It really means a lot. A lot of these guys, we've busted our asses in the music scene, and it's just really refreshing and awesome to see that it's doing really well. And I just thank you guys so thank freaking you. much. Thank the hard, you. The hard work is paying off. We appreciate you guys, man. Just keep bringing us that fire. We're going to keep jamming it for sure. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cheers. yeah, baby. Hell yeah. Oh, Later, yeah. guys. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.